Hi guys and welcome back to Top Speed Golf. In this video we're going to talk about the genius that is Ben Hogan way ahead of his time. Really knew his stuff, uh, really interesting to, to read his book. And in the back of the book you'll notice he has a, a diagram that talks about the, the feed alignments. I'll pop those up here on the screen. You'll notice that he's saying that in the shorter irons you're going to have the feet pointing more to the left of your target line. With the longer irons, mid to longer irons are going to be pretty much too square. And then with the driver the feet are actually going to be lined up to the right. So you know, it doesn't really make sense, right? I mean, why would you line up so many different ways with your driver, your mid irons, and, and your short irons? Why wouldn't we just line up the same way every time, make the same swing every time? And that's what we're going to talk about today. So we're going to talk about angle of attack with the invention of radar. And I use a flight scope a lot to, to measure angle of attack, to measure path and face angles. We know a lot more than, than we did. He was never able to measure anything like this, but he intuitively kind of figured out the science behind this. So first off, let's talk about when we're coming down into the ball, let's, let's do a, a little bit of a talking about angle of attack. So here we can imagine this is a swing plane. So if I'm setting up to this ball, let's go ahead and set it up right beside my golf ball. Let's imagine this is the bottom of my circle. And as I'm coming down, swinging this club, you know, it's kind of a small circle here, but as I'm swinging down, if I meet the ball right at the bottom of my arc and my club is at the bottom of its swing arc, meaning it's level with the ground before it starts coming back up, that's moving dead square through the ball. Now, let's imagine since we're hitting down, especially with short irons, shorter irons are hitting it down about five degrees, longer irons were hitting down about three degrees, so we are hitting down with, with all of the clubs off the ground. With a driver, we could hit a little bit up, but let's imagine for a second that now we're hitting down. Well, you'll notice on the downward angle here, my club is actually moving out to the right. So as it goes down this circle, it's moving out to the right. As it comes back up this circle, it's moving to the left when comparing to the target line. So if you look at this stick that's the alignment, uh, if I kind of tilt that to where now the bottom of the circle is in front, we can see how if I was hitting down into this ball, my path is going to be tilted to the right. So that's really all we need to know is that if we're swinging down, our path is going to be a bit more to the right. If we're catching something on the upswing, our path is going to be a bit more to the left or coming back into the left. Let's go ahead and get rid of this hula hoop for that. That's a great way to visualize it. But if we look at that, with our shorter irons, since we're hitting down more, our path is going to be a bit more to the right. Obviously, we don't want to hit the ball to the right. So if I was to set up dead straight, and I was to hit down into this golf ball with my, my kind of circular, my, my hula hoop there zeroed out, my club's going to be moving too far to the right. I'm going to be actually hitting over this direction. And if I was to take a driver or a club maybe that I would hit up on the ball, now my, my hula hoop would be coming back up to the left, and I'm going to hit it that direction. So with some simple feet adjustments, we can kind of iron this out. Now I do think that Hogan went a little bit overboard on how much he was showing the feet were different. You know, again, he, had, he just had to go off of feel and he didn't have the measurements of what we're looking at. But in the short irons, realize that if I align my feet up just a little bit to the left, I keep the same ball position pretty much the entire time in, in relation to my front foot. I line the ball, I line my feet up a little bit to the left. Now as I hit down, my face is moving through square. As I go into a longer iron, now I can line up almost dead square because I'm only coming down about three degrees angle of attack. I'm still going to line up, and based on the science, very, very slightly open with a longer iron. And now as I come down, I'm going to be hitting square through the ball. And let's say a driver, you know, PJ Tour Pros hit down about negative one degree, which means you could pretty much line square with your target and swing, make the same swing with your driver and do the same thing. Or if I, let's say that I want to hit a little farther and I wanted to catch that ball on a slightly ascending blow when it's moving back up. Well, we know if we're lined up square, that means the club's going to be moving back up to the left. Now I can go ahead and drop my right foot back a little bit. That's going to make it to where I'm tilting my alignment to the right. So as I start to work back up into the ball, now I'm coming square into the ball again. So what I can do is I can slightly adjust my stance from a little bit open with the shorter irons to basically a tiny bit open to almost dead square with the longer irons and fairway woods, and then a tiny bit closed with the driver. And now I can make the exact same swing every time. My angle of attack is gonna be 
matching what I want to do and I'm going to be able to hit those dead straight shots where I zero it out. So this is based on being able to zero out your path and meaning that my club is moving perfectly square through the ball as I make contact. So hopefully this makes some sense. I recommend you guys go out there, try it out on shorter irons, try a few a little bit open, try a few a little bit closed on the driver and see how it works for you. The science matches it up. I'm not saying that everybody has to do this. I'm saying it's a pretty ingenious thing that Hogan did. I thought it was definitely worth making a video out of and, and pretty cool. So with these longer irons, I have a six iron here. I'm gonna set up where I'm just a fraction open with my feet. Now I'm gonna be able to make a nice normal swing and that ball should take off dead straight. There we go, right down the middle of the fairway. That's probably within a yard or two of being down the center stripe. So good luck to you guys. Work on your golf swing. Play around with that foot alignment. Hogan definitely knew what he was doing. So uh, work hard and I'll see you guys soon. All right guys, so I hope y'all really enjoyed this video. If you did, I got a fantastic bonus for you. How would you like to have more lag in your golf swing? We know it's crucial to getting more distance and more speed. We gotta get that lag and then we gotta release it. Well, I got a preview of a video that's gonna go over the number one lag mistake I see. I see it time and time again, and some people are actually even taught this, that it's gonna help your lag when in reality, it hurts your lag. So I'm gonna have a preview of that video pop up here in a second. Go ahead and click the link that pops up in your screen or down below in the description. You'll be able to watch that entire video, get instant access to it. Plus you're gonna get instant access to five videos for my top speed golf system. So good luck to you guys. I'll see you on that lag video. If you have any questions, post them in the comments below. Click that thumbs up button. That really helps us to grow the channel, helps us to get, boost up these videos and keep more videos coming your way. And I'll also remember to subscribe, that way you'll see our latest videos. Good luck to you guys. I'll see you in the lag video. Hi guys and welcome back. I'm Clay Ballard and in today's video we're going to talk about one of the absolute worst drills for creating lag. It's a very common drill that I see. And in this drill, what we're going to do is we're going to set the wrist very early to create an angle of lag and then we're going to try to hold this throughout the swing. It's one of the worst things that you can, that you can do to build lag. I'm going to talk about the science behind why this is the case and I'm also going to give you a great drill to help you improve your lag all in this video. Let's go ahead and get started. I do it this way versus holding that position. Exact same thing happens when we're building lag in the golf swing. So what we wanna do is throughout the swing, I wanna have a very low and wide takeaway. So I'm not gonna set my wrist early at all. If you look at a lot of the top players, you look at uh, Adam Scott, very wide takeaway, not very much wrist set at all. You look at Roy McIlroy, you look at Tiger Woods, all these players are using a wide takeaway and not getting very much wrist set so that later in the swing, as we start down, we can increase this wrist set and we're really only gonna max out this angle of lag for a split second in the downswing. Okay, so a three-step drill here. Now, as we get started with this, I want to remind you that the fulcrum in this golf club for getting a massive amount of lag is right at the end of the golf club. This is where I want my hinge point to be. I wanna use the full length of this club to build lag and then release lag.